do. That's the part I think people are okay with. It's the forcing the credit that really makes it difficult. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, and I just had, I had one tiny minor, and I don't even know how critical it is for this, but in your clubs and activities, I'm not sure that that's comprehensive with everything. Only, but I only picked up on it because we've had a couple of recent presentations. So. Is it, I'm sorry, I'm missing In it. the clubs and activities. It's just, so the B club, maybe B club. The B club, yeah. The B club's not there, and what Blaze talked about last week, the rugby rugby club's not there. I don't know if that's intended to continue next week, or next club year. Rugby club is oh, not sorry. attached to the. Oh, it's not. Oh, right there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and I think your Mount Bike club is that attached to the school? Yes. So. Yeah. So, anyways, it's no, it's, it, we, we, it's we, minor, but one of the good things is we add a lot, and so right. um, we're getting into the handbook of the program of studies. And Probably have to update the program studies. Yeah. That's not a minor. That's a great thing to bring up. Perfect thing to bring up. Appreciate it. Um, so these those get added as it goes. So just for clarity for people tuned in. Yes, sir. So in these programs of studies, it, does it include the courses and everything for next year? Yep. Yeah. Are there any new courses that seem exciting? No, it's 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 nice that we have a risk that we might have of all the ones listed we might have missed out many more. That's a wonderful problem to have, wonderful question to answer. Um, so in its current state because we do keep adding things and adjusting to the student needs, population, and staffing. How, um, in the past, how accurate have we kept that lengthy list of clubs and the like? Mostly accurate, mostly accurate. We, you know, it's interesting, just we've, get, we've done the schedule already for next year, and I think things should be updated, but they're, they're meaning I, I think they are updated in that program of studies, but, um, you know, occasionally, you know, I'll, I'll Blame Tara a little bit in a good way. There, there becomes times where we just find a need at some point in time, and, and uh, you know, what we'll typically do is add that class and then go to the program that is the next year. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other comments, questions? Appreciate the discussion. Um, could I? Oh, sorry, I got motion second. All in favor of approving the proposed program of studies for 2019 20, please say aye. 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 Uh, looking for a motion to approve the proposed project manager contract 2019 2020. Thank you. Second. I'll second it. Second gets us to discussion. Thank you, Andy. All right. Um, a lot of work to get to this point in a, in a very fairly short period of time. So, uh, first off, any questions, uh, comments, or corrections? It, Andy and I are the closest yep. to this. So, this um, goes through March of next year, and then depending on what happens next. <coughs> so, the, uh, I put the addendum page, I didn't want to print out the whole 11 pages. So, just page four it gives out the clarity of the contract. Um, where it's a $70 an hour from May 1st, 2019 to March 15th, and then based upon successful vote, um, we may choose to extend the contract from that. So, just to make sure if we have new folks on board, go ahead, did you have a question or comment? Yep, I was going to ask if there's a cap on that, on the, on the total spend that you might incur. So you'll see that in your last approved article tonight, will be up to $40,000. Okay. Yes. Great question. So just to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about up here, so the owner's project manager is a model where um, we uh, seek experienced help in guiding us through the school project. Um, and so we have um, that we, there's been a series of meetings, we covered a lot of this last month, to get, try to give you the short version. Um, after the new board was formed, Andy joined the CES subcommittee. I was still on it. There's two board members on each subcommittee. In that meeting, we uh, pretty briskly got to 
uh, unanimous decision to dissolve that subcommittee so that we're focusing all of our efforts on our CIP. The town is a CIP. We have a CIP. It makes more sense. Um, that was driven um, in part by several voices of, yes, we absolutely have to address the elementary school, but we really want to look at the whole school system, which includes both buildings um, and athletic fields, which came up today with the way the, the weather's been this spring. So the um, SES subcommittee that was very active last year is, is it's gone. The CIP is going to be bolstered with um, our full focus on that. And so that committee brought forth the owner's project manager to, um, we, were, we did interviews. We had excellent candidates to pick from. It's a luxury when you're interviewing, especially in this uh, economy and job market. We had, we had three very compelling candidates. We're thankful all three of them for their interests. Um, and so we moved fairly um, successfully forward with that. So it's, um, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, it's Gordon Bristol. And um, he's finishing a large project locally. You'll be able to meet him. He's going to help us with uh, one of the first duties for this is to have help us select the appropriate architect. When that is in place, then we can work towards um, scheduling community forum or forums to hear what the community's feelings are about this. And we have both of those resources to guide us forward. There is the hourly fee, $70, I think, is what was settled. Um, but there can be an enormous savings on the back end and also um, navigating the permits, how to, nav how to work with different entities, how to watch costs, all of those. So it's, it's basically a partner or an advocate for the school board and the taxpayers <coughs> to um, make sure the right things are coming to light at the right cost at the right pace. So it's very exciting for those of us uh, that, I guess I'm the only one left from that committee to have this is a very different approach, which I think the community is going to be um, very happy with. So um, we've got a motion to the second. Any any questions specifically, Andy? Do you want to add any color? Did I, I, don't, I, I no, tried I think, to do the I think fast. I did a good version. job. All right, we take turns on that as yeah. we go for it. All right, thanks. Um, all right, so uh, did you want to add anything? Any comments, sure. Kelly Russ? OK. Um, all in favor of approving the proposed project manager contract for 2019-20, please say aye. 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 All right, unanimous, appreciate it. Um, and related to that, moving on, I'd like a motion to approve the proposed request for quote or RFQ for architectural and design firms to review and develop plans to address the district facility issues and needs. I make a motion to approve the proposed RFQ for architectural and design firms to review and develop plans to address district seven issues and needs. All set. Thank you. I'll second that. <coughs> All right. Andy. All right. Uh, questions, comments, concerns? We have lots of questions. Go for it. <laughs> Fire away. All right. So, um, <coughs> I got a lot of notes, so I got to first be able to read my notes here. So when we talked about um, potentially considering a firm to bring in and create a master facility plan, so presumably that's to assess the current state of the facilities that we have. Is that yes. right? That is a wonderful question. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So my question, though, really is, <coughs> is if we're going to do that, is that not kind of a does that not a first step before we start planning what to do? Would we want to not know that before we? start planning what we're actually going to do. You, Does yes. that make sense? Does yes. that make sense? To, to, re to restate your, your question yeah. as, as a direct response. So what's going to happen? Yeah. So we have Gordon's help. He's going to help us find the right part as our partner and advocate. He's going to help us find the right partner to work with. Then that architect firm, the build doesn't, the build not, not be select, builder might not be selected until after the bond passes. The architect is going to look at everything. So we have 20 years of documents from the original start of the facility, that, uh, the plan for the facility that, that failed in 2006, and then the new version of it that failed mm -hmm. in March. So they, they digest all of that as part of making their own assessment. And then they say, um, this is what we want you thinking about, to the point of, this is, an, this is the one thing that you can do. These are 
three things you can do. We don't know what they're going to say, but the big part of it is leveraging what we've already paid for to get to this point, but then they take their fresh view because they might come up with some very different right. outcomes. So that's, it's not that we're going to hire a new firm to come in and do this facilities assessment that's already been done. The, they're going to come in and we're hiring them to come in and do a facilities assessment. As part of that, we're going to give them everything that we have that we've done over the last many years. I'm missing, so, I'm sorry. Well, 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 no, I guess, I guess what I'm concerned about is I don't know that that's the skill set of an architect. I feel like that's like a whole separate skill set of somebody you'd have to hire as a consultant to do that type of I, evaluation. Which is actually there has been some quite a bit of documentation and, and already it's been done with like the heating system here, mm -hmm. the air handlers, and, and we have a relationship with Honeywell that's done a facilities uh, plan for the high school. Um, but I think what the architect, what we would like the architect to do is to review that plan, see what the needs are here also, so that they can help us come up with a full facilities plan. Got it. And Gordon is going to be reviewing <coughs> as well from that right. perspective of that. Yeah. If this, you know, when this goes to build, all of those things are in line. So he's going to do his assessment and then the architect is going to have their own view and leverage what we've already been. So it's a combination really of at well, least three major factors. Yeah. yeah. So we have to stop thinking one school and think district projects. Oh no, I fully agree. I was just, I, it was more questioning whether the architect is the right person to make an evaluation on the lifespan of a building, which I would, in my maybe not so informed way, I would say probably not. Right. They can, they can do all the master planning and stuff, but when you're talking about evaluating the lifespan of a building or you know, some of the other you know, structural integrity and things like that, I don't think that that's in the wheelhouse of an architect. That's, that's what I was getting. Sure. Yeah. So that would be answered? Yeah. Okay. Yep. But having uh, Gordon's expertise and him getting started right away, yeah. some of that will already be seen. Yeah. It's, part of, it's part of his expertise knowing where and when to pull in the right person to you know, assist him with that process. That's what I mean. That's part of his expertise. He, he's he's going to, he advises the subcommittee and then we're going to take an action that the board <coughs> weigh in on, then Andy and I bring it from the subcommittee up to here. So, so yes, if the, he, but he's going to say this is what we're, this is what we're looking at, this is what I recommend, we can consider it, if the subcommittee is good, then it comes back to this board. <coughs> but I, I would think that the architect is going to have his engineers and his team around them as well. And I'm going to make the assumption that we'll probably go with someone who's done a lot of school projects. So I do think they'll have the ability to look at what we've already done and then make some assessments as far as, like, is the Honeywell system, is the Honeywell report, is that what we want to be in? Is that accurate to be done within the next five years? Does that building have 10 years left of life or does it have 20 years left of life based upon what we already know is there? So I think they will be able to, maybe not to the point where we just brought an engineer in and said, hey, specifically look at our HVAC needs, mm -hmm. what do you think, which we've done here? But I think they can put all that together in one pot and using their engineers and design team come up and give us some answers and then give us plans, whether it's one, two, three, or five different plans, and then we have to determine which and how we put them and where we put them. So if this goes well, which we are optimists and motivated to have it go well, mm -hmm. and it's going to be brisk and there's going to be a very... I'm going to look at Andy and not smile, but I can't. There's going to be a lot of meetings. There's going to be a lot of information at these meetings that comes up because all of the notes and everything. So we're looking at, um, uh, while well the school's getting into their furiously busy season, this is potentially going to be mm -hmm. a lot of because we need to get things lined up enough because we want to get a, a, to a community forum as soon as we respond to the can. Mm -hmm. So expect there's a likelihood there'll be several updates in the next couple of meetings. Um, about hopefully some great progress are made. Okay. All right. Anything? Bill Seth, Scott. Okay. All right. So. Uh, so I, we'll I have a lot more. Have oh, good. Questions. Sorry. <laughs> I like the discussion. I, I'm Keep sorry. I don't. I don't want to bog this down, but I do have a lot of questions, like in in the RFQ space, and when we're asking about experience and the, the information that we want to get back from these potential firms. Yeah. 
Um, so I feel like there's, so let me start with some just some questions. So when we talk about describing experience with New Hampshire public school systems, is there a reason why we want to narrow it to just New Hampshire, as opposed to surrounding states potentially? Or there are different educational specifications that each state has, mm -hmm. and so we want to make sure that someone at least has some experience with New Hampshire specifications. But you, but we could take a firm from oh, another sure. state as long as they have experience. Sure. Yeah. yeah, we'd expect Maine, Massachusetts experience to be to find this yeah. an appealing project to bid on. We consider it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's emphasizing how to navigate um, New Hampshire yeah. is a priority, but it's not an ex you know wouldn't exclude them. Yeah, there's also some cost factor in it. You go with an out-of-state firm, they get more mileage, they get you know more time. So hopefully we can find somebody local that will fit our needs. Right. Okay. Um, so, and then we're asking about experience in the last three years. Do you feel like that's a wide enough time frame? Because, I mean, I don't know how frequently these school projects come up, or especially large-scale ones, but three years feels like a really narrow window. So just, just a quick clarification. So on this uh, RFQ, this is like a quote, so we're really just interviewing architectural firms right now. Yeah. So I would think once we determine, maybe we narrow that down through an interview process of three, when we put an RFP out, because now we've got to ask them to come in and say, all right, what do you, how much is this going to cost and these are the things we need you to do. Yeah. So I, I think we're just trying to cast a net right now of yeah. looking who's available, and then I think we get a little more specific. So yeah. like, give, us a, give us your last 10 years of building projects if we decide that you're one of the top three firms that we're going to really take mm -hmm. a long time to look at. Yeah, so I'm... So I do a lot of work in RFQs and RFPs. So I write them, I receive them. So I'm sure. looking at this through my lens and just picking out what pops out to me. Sure. So three years, again, just to me, struck me immediately as pretty narrow based on my experience. This isn't my expert, you know, my area of expertise, right. but it just, just a, you know, we will a, have, a question. Um, I'll defer to, to people who have more expertise. But. Well, and the, the, the piece of this, I think that's great. And these are great questions. I you know, ask them all because Gordon will look at this Friday with me. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go through this and say, hey, this is good, this is bad, this is what we need to change yeah. before we actually put out the final version. Yeah, yeah, and I did read that too, so that's good. Um, okay, so then the other pieces were just more recommendations because there's a, you know, there's a number of things that we're asking for for them to speak to in the way of their experience. But I think if you look at the selection criteria that are listed, I think at a minimum the selection criteria need to have corresponding questions that tap into those areas of interest, so when you talk about sustainability and energy efficiency, I think we need to ask specifically what their experience is with those things. Um, specifically what are ex their experiences with working with state agencies and in what capacity, right? What agencies and what capacity were you working with them? Um, I don't know. Can so I, we're, just I, mean, I, so well, I don't want to dominate well, the whole No, area. no, you might be yeah. more insightful. So I would, I'm, I'm making the assumption that that's coming out during that interview process. So that would, that's when we go and we dig a little mm -hmm. deeper. So with your experience with that. Because mm -hmm. that's right, I mean, given that insight, because that's kind of how I'm looking at that, that once yep. we sort of, you, you've applied, we're interviewing you and we're going, okay, let's talk about state agencies. How have you worked with the Department of Ed? How have you worked with the Department of Transportation in New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. right, that's where I see that level of questioning. Coming. I guess it depends on how you intend to use this information to form your, to, to narrow down the candidates, right. effectively your candidate pool. And if some of this information is key and critical to making those decisions, that I would think the more information you get up front is going to make you or enable you to make a more informed decision to narrow and only interview those who really fit the bill. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the way I would look at it. So yeah, that's, I mean it's a, it's a good insight. I, so my assumption, like on the on the 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 PM, mm -hmm. we put that out there. I think we were hoping four or five, right? We probably would have got four or five. We probably have interviewed all four or five. Mm -hmm. So on this, uh, let, let's say we get six. Mm -hmm. I would assume we're going to go probably interview all six. Now, if we had ten, yeah. you're probably right. I'd probably have to go to the committee and say, all right, who do we know? Who can I start to call that has been involved in other schools? How does that work? What does that work look like? Mm -hmm. And I sort of go through a network. But, you no, know, I understand the, the point. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, my thought was that would be more through that process. So if I got five architectural design teams, I'd probably interview all five and try to dig to that level during that interview process. Mm -hmm. Before I move on, if this is within your expertise, whether it applies to building schools or not, or hiring architects. If you have specific questions that you recommend yeah. for the committee to um, consider, that would be 
wonderful to have here. And, yeah. and it can be a great, from asking the right questions, is if you don't have any expertise, you're looking at it from the pharmaceutical world, mm -hmm. this is what you think they should be asked. If you could give Andy and I those questions, then we can, that'll broaden our perspective. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I can either keep going through them now or I can send them separately because I've got, you know, a number of things that I raise questions about just trying to if put myself to in the seat of a selection committee and what, what information I'd be looking at to do a comparison. And, and for me, <coughs> when I'm reviewing RFQs and trying to select a vendor, I want to try to get as much of an apples to apples comparison from one. When you're looking at the Right, right from one group to the next. Right. And there's multiple factors, right? So I think it's kind of important. And so I will send you the questions okay. that I think would, that I would recommend be included or things that we should look at. The only other thing that I'll say right here is on the professional fees piece. I think it makes sense to tighten that up because it's not really specific what we're asking them to bid on. We haven't defined very precisely what the project is. It could be a whole bunch of different variations or scenarios that we're looking at. So I think, again, just to try and do an apples to apples comparison, you don't want to choose the most expensive firm. You don't want to choose the cheapest, but you want to kind of know somewhere on the spectrum, based on a set of criteria you get them to bid on, what pricing is going to look like. So if, if you can outline, just give an overview of our district facilities, our student population, what we're trying to solve for. Yeah. If you outline all of those criteria and then ask them to provide a ballpark estimate based on what you've provided, then you know that at least everybody's looking at it through the same lens. And you can tell if you get a cost for you know X versus Y, you know where where they are as far as. Okay. Yeah. I, again, I'm I'm going through as I went through things today, yeah. and I've gone through them. So, my thought there would have been you're going to look at your architect fee, your your sub fee, your engineering fee, yep. your, your right whatever one of those sort of people that are on their staff, and sort of looking at those typical people, I would say. Yep. And then matching those, but you're going a little more granular, and I can, I can see that. Well, yes and no, because the other, I initially thought about this, I, I said, well, maybe hourly rates, asking for hourly rates right. for those people is the way to go, but then I don't think that is the way to go, because again, totally. depending on the mix of staff, the, the skill set and the levels of the staff, what might be 10 hours for one firm, because they use this level, could be five at another firm, so while maybe more expensive hourly, it's offset by less hours. Sure. So I think having, the overview and ask them to, asking them to ballpark based on this. Yep. If you were to do a master plan based on our school district, our facilities, what we're trying to solve for, give us a ballpark estimate of what that would look like. I think you'll get something that's a little bit more interpretable. Okay. You're meeting with Gordon on this Friday, so, yeah. right? Yeah. So we'll be on the board. You happen to be around on Friday. So. <laughs> Possibly. It just depends on the time. That would yeah. You guys could check on sure. Central. Well, yep. That makes a lot of sense because, I mean, in my world, the partner's time is worth a heck of a lot more than a staff accountant or those three levels in between. So yep. you want to get a sense of what resources they're going to utilize and there yep. may be a cost differential. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I also want to see, you know, in a scenario like this, I want to see um, when they're talking about their experience in the projects that they've managed in the past, I want to see what their projected estimates were up front. Now, I mean, I guess it's, it's only going to be as good as, as they are truthful, but you ask if we ask for their um, initial projected estimates for the project versus where they landed in actuality, you can get some idea of, you know, how accurate they are in their bidding, what their overage, I mean, right. typically you're going to go over and not under. That's not in this project, but I know it's Hopefully, but, but I mean, but, but in general, you can see how accurate they are, and then where there's variation, you, we would, I would want to know why did it vary. Is it because, you know, we as a district asked you to add a bunch of things, or is it because your timeline just ran six months longer than it should have? So, you know. Well, just for insight, one of the um, project manager proposals was framed exactly like that, mm -hmm. and that was, and it was laid out consistently budget for the project, savings, timeline, and the whole bit. So that's what yep. we would expect. Um, I guess I'm editorializing <coughs> beyond what I should, but there aren't a whole lot of districts in New Hampshire that are going to be trying to build or remodel schools next year. Right. So the folks that cater to that have a limited target audience, and they're going to come at us with, we will have a steep learning curve. We have Andy's expertise from his building uh, career. Uh, but we're expecting to have those kinds of details. So to have this discussion on the front is exactly 
exactly what yeah. we did is helpful and needed. So keep keep going. What else do you got? <laughs> um, well, I think most of them are recommendations for questions that we should be asking. So again, I can either go through them all or I can I can share them separate for consideration. Well, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's a seven and tomorrow, and then I can get them to the committee. And then my big piece would be to sit down when I sit with Gordon and just yep. say, all right, here's some of the concerns and questions yep. came up at the board meeting. You've been through this process a lot many times before I did. Yep. Where are we going? Yeah, I mean, I think conceptually it's di it's directionally right. I think it just can be tightened up a lot more to yep. get a better output okay. from the firms great. that are going to bid. Sure. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. No um, other comments or questions? Uh, so we're going to go with approving this. This is proposed, but everybody understands that now you're going to help with it, and it was already planned for Russ and Gordon to meet on it on Friday. So I'm comfortable with that. Um, it doesn't make sense to everybody that's watching. Um, so I'd, I'd say uh, all in favor of approving the proposed RFQ for the architecture and design firms to review and develop plans to address the district facility issues and needs. Please say aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, I need a motion to approve the proposed, excuse me, teacher for SMHS, Scott McNamee. I guess I'll make a motion to approve the proposed teacher for SMHS, Scott McNamee. I'll second. Uh, Gary, thank you. Any uh, questions, discussion? Any, any comments? We have a resignation of Mike uh, Robbins. We had about 19 applicants. I think Johnny interviewed six or seven, and this was the committee's top choice. Strong, strong applicant pool. Very strong. The references yeah, can really, highly really recommend strong applicants. Maybe just a quick pointer uh, for all the new board members. How, how does that interview process typically work for a so Sean would Sean would put a commi committee together of teachers and faculty here. Uh, he would meet, they would decide. Again, we had 19 applicants in this one. They went through that pool. They decided they were going to interview. I think six or seven. He has those interviews, and they basically get narrowed down to probably two or three. Um, they vote on who they think they want to send forward to me, the superintendent. I allow them to see send one or two to me if they can't make a decision. In this case, they sent one. Met with the individual. Um, called his references, both with the superintendent, got good references, met with him, asked him if he was interested in the job, and he's willing to accept. So that's, in a nutshell, the process, I guess. That, that probably takes a month, maybe a little longer at times, depending on the, where can we get people in. Well, not from start of bed to finish. From start of bed to finish, it's probably a couple of months, quite honestly. Yeah, probably a little over a month from start of bed, you know, we advertise the position. Um, we always, for a teacher position, have a, have a hiring committee. You know, typically, it's at least one administrator, sometimes two, usually a member of guidance, um, member of special education. In this case, where being an English teacher, you're going to have at least one English teacher. In this case, it was two. So typically, we try to keep it to about six or seven people. Um, they make a recommendation to me. Um, again, as Mr. Holden said, sometimes it could be two or three, and we'll bring them to the next level. Um, sometimes it can be one. And, uh, it comes to me as a recommendation, and then um, I bring it to Mr. Holden. And it's usually pretty, pretty um, streamlined process. They're very thoughtful about it. Um, they have a very common set of questions. The committee is actively involved in preparing those questions. So our new English teacher has a, a BFA from St. Lawrence in English writing and a master's in education and curriculum design from New England College. So um, it's a pretty impressive resume. All right. Um, Looking for a motion to approve the proposed teacher for Sunday Middle School. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Thank you for that. Um, it's that time of year. We need to approve the. So I get a motion to approve the Primex CAP program. I make a motion that we approve the Primex CAP program. Thank you, Scott and Ed. All right, um, first page in gives a summary, just so people aren't used to that or if you didn't get a packet. 
three-year agreement to purchase work.